everyone welcome to manika ias welcome to the daily news analysis session presented to you by the manika ias so before we proceed further we'll first see the topics that will be covering today along with their relevance with respect to your exam as well as the sub topics that will be covering under the topic okay so the very first topic that will be covering is the uh, private investment in nuclear power plant so he, this is relevant for your uh, gs paper 3 it can be asked in either in science and technology or it can also be asked in environment and economics here we'll be discussing about the renewable energy then we'll be discussing about nuclear fusion and nuclear fusion reaction along with the present private investment needs okay then the second topic that we'll be covering is your free speech free speech here essentially we'll be discussing about the kunal kamara case the high court judgment on it and also we'll be discussing about the constitutional provision this is relevant with reference to your gs paper 2 polity okay then we'll be discussing about panchayati raj institution this is also relevant for your gs paper 2 polity both in your prelims as well as your mains here we'll be discussing about the financial devolution of powers and also like how the uh, finances today are there with respect to panchayati government uh, panchayati raj institutions then what are the future revenues from which we can devolve more power to pris so that they can have their own revenue to function better then uh, this is microplastic and nanoplastic along with their health concerns we'll be discussing it with reference to uh, a recent study which was released with respect to the presence of microplastics and nanoplastic in the uh, water bottle so that is something that we'll be discussing it is relevant for your prelims as well as for your mains in terms of your gs paper 3 then reservations for maratha this is a very small topic that we'll be seeing but we'll be seeing with the um ambit of article 16 of the indian constitution so let's move to the very first topic which is your nuclear power private investment so what is the context why the issue was seen in news see recently uh, there were some officials which said that that india will invite private companies to invest about 26 billion dollars in the nuclear energy sector why do you want to tap in the nuclear energy sector because nuclear energy is a sort of a clean energy and it will take india to its goal of sustainable energy so that is why we want to tap in the nuclear energy sector okay so if you see this is the first time where india is pursuing private investment in terms of nuclear power okay so far it has been government uh, driven now if you see the advantage it is a non carbon emitting energy source that means you can have energy but at the same time you can reduce the carbon emissions and that is why you can move closer to the indc goal of india as well now at present the contribution of nuclear power is 2% of india's total electricity generation and is the fifth largest source of electricity in india but it stand at this 2% and we need to increase this from 2% currently if we see we have 22 nuclear reactors in seven power plants which together produce only 6780 megawatts of nuclear power and this is something we need to increase okay another important advantage of nuclear power is that it is very cost effective and it is also commercially viable energy option then if you see what is the difference between nuclear fusion and nuclear fusion see at present when we are 
generating energy so we are using nuclear fission and we are not using nuclear fission fusion but before we proceed let's first understand the difference so nu in nuclear fission we basically take two atoms and we make split each of them and it led to a release of energy okay so you have uranium 235 okay it will split the neutron of this will split and it will convert into a lighter element and a neutron this neutron will then be used and as a source of energy emission okay and if you see nuclear fusion as the name suggests we are fusing something together in fission we are breaking something in fusion we are a uh, fusion uh, uh, bringing some something together to fuse to each other so that they can generate energy so here we are using isotopes of hydrogen deuterium and tritium and they will make helium energy and neutron this is how the fusion and fusion take place okay if you see the fusion reaction it doesn't occur naturally but if you see the fusion reaction it occurs naturally and it is occurring regularly in sun and stars so it need less energy and it requires high energy so if you see your atomic bomb that it work on the principle of uh, fusion only and that is why we have various uh, nuclear control programs in the world because you do not want people to use nuclear energy for construction activity destruction activities so that is why we have npt nuclear surprise group vasana group so these are the kind of group which are available to control the spread of nuclear energy in the world and that is why we still face problem with respect to production of nuclear energy however we are committed for the uh, production of nuclear energy not for the uh, 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 destruction activities but for the use of electricity for the civilian use so uh, at present nuclear energy is permitted to be used for civilian use okay now i have one question for all of you that see we have already discussed the answer but i uh, want you to answer this in your comment section that why we are using nuclear fusion but not not nuclear fusion for to generate electricity okay this is something that you need to ponder upon we have already answered it in uh, in a way and i will answer this tomorrow but for you this is in homework please comment why we are using fission only and not fusion for the development of electricity now if you see india's india has a three stage nuclear program which was envisaged by homi jahangir baba if any of you have seen this documentary not a documentary but a series rocket boys you would have learned something about this so he was working on the nuclear program he was the brain child um, behind it, the the nuclear program is the brain child of um, homi jahangir baba so in the very first stage we will be using natural uh, uranium and will be using heavy water reactors to produce plutonium in the second stage we will be using mix of plutonium and natural uranium with sufficient stocks and we'll can use thorium to convert it into uranium 233 and why we have this plan because we in india have less resources available for uranium and recently we have also found a thorium also availability in india okay <clears throat> in the next third stage you'll have electricity where mix of thorium and uranium fuel the reactors and thorium transmutes to uranium 233 which powers the reactor so this was the three stage uh, nuclear reactor program which was envisaged by homi jahangir baba if you haven't watched this series please watch it will be a very insightful series for you to see when it comes to india's nuclear program now if you see the current scenario the current news why uh, the, the investment thing so if you talk about the investment what will be the significance so it will help india to achieve its target of having 50% of installed electric generation capacity using non fossil fuel by 2030 so india has a target that it wants to have it electricity 50% of electricity uh, 
by 2030 which will be coming from known fossil fuel that means known coal based electricity so we want to do away with the usage of coal based electricity up to extent of 50 percent which was earlier 42 percent and now we have raised the target to 50 percent by 2030 so this is something that can be achieved if we are tapping on the energy resources which has a huge but huge potential because at present we only have two percent of our electricity coming from the nuclear powers okay now if you see as per the reports although it is not a government statement but as per certain reports the government is in talks with five private firms which include reliance Tata Power, adani and vedanta limited that they want to invest uh, they want them to invest 440 billion rupees each and that is 5.3 billion dollars okay <clears throat> so this is something that government is in talk about but it is not yet finalized so we'll ponder upon this aspect more when the things will be finalized and will have a final draft out there but as of now these are the talks that are going and this is speculative but here it is important for us to understand key अगर हम UPSC की बात करें या in general भी अगर हम बात करें, what is the relevance of nuclear power energy for India and how it can help us in combating the climate change and what is the what are the steps that India is taking further? Okay, so this is something that you can highlight when you are writing your answers. Now, government wants to build. 11,000 megawatt of new nuclear power generation capacity by 2040 and we have approximately 6,000 installed so far. So we want to have 11,000 megawatt of new power generation capacity by 2040. Okay. <coughs> so at present NPCL is on karta hai India ka nuclear power because it is a government company. So this, this, is, this was a move which was taking us towards the privatization of nuclear power. Okay, involvement of part, private part, participation in nuclear power. So if you see the next topic here is a free speech. So what happened in January 30, on January 31st, there was this high court, Bombay high court that has given a split judgment. Why I am saying a split judgment? Because it was a two judge bench who was sitting on the petition filed by Kunal Kamra and three others with respect to this violation of freedom of speech envisaged in the amendment made to IT Act 2000. Okay, so uh, we'll discuss about amendment in a bit. But now uh, the verdict given by the two, two judges, one verdict was in favor of the petitioner, the other was in favor of the government amendment. Okay. Now here we'll be focusing on the one which is in the favor of petitioner because that is upholding the freedom of speech. So we'll talking about the constitutionality of it. But if you talk about the case as of now, if you talk about the case per se, now the case will be kept in front of a third judge so that they can come to a conclusive uh, outcome. And you might and might not see the same case we put place the chances are more that it will be put place in front of supreme court in the coming time but the time is yet to come so we'll be discussing about the recent judgment so far so before we proceed to the judgment let us first understand key amendment thi kya? what were the amendment which was made so it uh, <coughs> it was made to the central government information it act intermediary guidelines and digital media amendment tool 2023 okay now <clears throat> it has empowered the government that it can establish a fact checking unit say for example today you on social media go and say something with respect to the central government okay unke kisi bhi working se related you are writing or saying something say for example you are giving some data okay unemployment rate is 50 percent in the country now they, they, this uh, fact checking unit will sit and figure out whether the uh, fact which have been presented on the uh, social media or some other way the are they right they are not malified they are not false so if they say the facts are false then the intermediary that is the platform is bound to remove that content okay 
So essentially, this was brought in to do away with the spread of fake and false information to of uh, to be uh, doing away with the false narrative that can be set using the uh, social media. Because see, social media has a structure. It is it has the algorithm of social media works in such a manner that if you start consuming a kind of content today, you will get more such content on a regular basis. So it gives you the content that you start consuming on a magnum scale. So uh, if uh, today you get some false information and you liked it or interacted with that, the chances that 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 kind of information will come to your feed on a re more regular basis. So that is why this particular provision was uh, put in place. Okay, in order to avoid any sort of false and information and also to control the spread of information on the social media however <coughs> so it says the government can ask social media platforms such as facebook x instagram youtube to remove any content news related to the business of the central government however the issue here is that the ambit has been kept open so the government has not explained What is the business of the central government? मतलब आपने ambit restrict ही नहीं किया, so it is an open ambit. आप किसी भी चीज को बोल सकते हो कि okay this is the government business, so will our fact checking unit will come into place and it will remove the information. Because on the other hand, if you are removing certain piece of information, you are saying that it is false, but this is also taking away the right of people to speak something, ना? So this is against your freedom of speech and expression. Okay, so and uh, he also said. that it is against uh, my freedom of profession also if you are restricting me to say something even if in a satire style if even if it is in a joke if it is in a comedy way i have the right to say whatever i want to if when if it is against the ruling government because now, and if you are uh, stopping me to do something then it is also against my 19 clause 1 sub clause g freedom to profess any uh, work that you want to do theek okay? hai so an organization appointed by the government will be the arbiter of such content theek hai and this organization is your fact checking unit so these were the amendments now if you see uh, another provision which was added was if you if the intermediary fail to comply then they will invite penal consequences for the intermediary okay and the intermediary will be liable to punishment under any law for time being in force including the provisions of the act and ipc so it is not just that you are stopping it you not just you are stopping the spread of information but you are also making it penalized okay <coughs> so what is the impact of these provision is that it counter unfettered power of the fact checking unit to control the digital content in the business of the central government without specifying the contours of the government business as we have said so it gives enormous powers to this fcu so this is actually the issue this is your core issue ki when you are bringing in such provisions it is giving a body enormous amount of power to change or to counter any sort of information which is available on the social media and uh, that you are trying to control digital content at the same time you are not even specify ki a government business ke ambit mein aata kya kya hai either to you specify ki this 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 comes under the ambit of government business but if sheer criticism also comes under the uh, ambit of government business then the, you are actually uh, criticizing any sort of dissent also which is you are uh, you are stopping any sort of dissent also which is your uh, fundamental right so this is something which was said by the judgment the judge who was giving the judgment so <clears throat> this is what he said that we need to uh, uh, consider that the right to speech is sacrosanct so if you see under article 19 clause 1 freedom of speech and expression is your fundamental right freedom of speech and expression now at the same time it is 19 clause 2 which provide reasonable restriction 
and these res reasonable restriction include sovereignty of the country integrity of the country its friendly relation with the neighborhood and then it also says uh, defamation is one of the uh, uh, reasonable restriction given public order and these are the reasonable restriction which are enumerated under article 19 clause 2 so if you are saying something which is going against the interest of the country which is against the integrity sovereignty security unity of the country then that is Uh, condemned okay however it also say that if you talk about sedition that you cannot make seditious remark but the the supreme court in his various judgment has said criticism to any extent of the government is allowed but if any remark of you are incite violence within the people that is something that amounts to sedition so even if you take social media as a platform right and if you are uh, seeing that the freedom of speech and expression is curtailed on the basis of falsification of information and then it another impact of this will be every uh, uh, control of this information will be taken to the supreme court and who, every time supreme court has to decide whether this particular information can be placed in the uh, public forum or not so this this will lead to a circle of petitions which will be filed in the supreme court and here if the criticism of the government also comes under the ambit of the government business then this is wrong this is something which is said by justice gautam who was the one who ruled in favor of the government uh, in the petitioner so this was about the freedom of uh, speech and expression envisaged in the constitution as well as the current challenges which which are being uh, put forward by the recent amendment made to the it act okay so this was something that we discussed now let's move to the next topic which is your panchayati raj institutions now panchayati raj institutions came into place in 1992 so what happened the government figured out that there is a need to have a decentralization to have a devolution of power given to the local bodies so that they can have a, they can reach the governance can reach the grassroots level so that you can reach each and every poor and nook and corner of the country and that is why the pri came into place in 1992 by by the means of 73rd and 74th constitutional amendment act okay which was meant for local bodies pris and municipalities in the urban areas okay now one important ambit of this was that it was the state government which was to give powers devolve its powers to the local govern local government bodies okay however we have seen that it is not uniform all across the states so every state has given some or the other power to the local bodies however some have given very less powers so in some places you will find the pris are a toothless bodies whereas some have devolved more number of powers because see everybody uh, feels that power is a scarce uh, uh, scarcity okay so you want to have power it within your hands you do not want to devolve power to other because if you are giving power so it make you feel powerless although it's not the truth but everybody wants to have concentration of power in their own hands so that have, they can have their own say that is why we have seen that a uh, gov state government have devolved less power to the pris and that has been issue and another important thing here is see for anybody uh, forget about the pris anybody who wants to be independent need to have economic resources in his own hand you need to be economically independent to be socially and politically independent okay although in a federal structure will be working together but at the same time economical power is important to have political and social to have the power to bring in political and social changes in the society as such but if you see pris they are dependent on the state and the center for majority of their fund needs only 1% of their income is coming from their own source resources rest is as given to them as grants by the state and center and this is not a good picture for the uh, uh, healthy working of pris okay now let's see <coughs> here 
See, panchayat earn only 1% of revenue through taxes and with the rest being raised as grant from state and center. Okay. Now, 80% of the revenue is from the center and 15% is from the states. So, this is again a huge difference. So, if you see, this, was, this is with respect to the devolution of uh, funds between the uh, the distribution of fund between the center state and panchayats. Now, if you see uh, the body is Gram Panchayat, Intermediate Panchayat and District Panchayat, where Gram Panchayat have 89% of his own taxes. If you see Intermediary Panchayat, they have only 15%. And coming to District Panchayat, they only have 7% of this 1%. Okay. So 89% Gram Panchayat ke khud ke resources hote hai, taxes, but intermediary ke wahan pe 15% hai. So na ki sirf aapko Gram uh, Panchayat bodies ka uh, overall aapko uh, finances improve karna padega, unka own imp but you need to address this, uh, this informity as well. Okay, so you need to address this imbalance as well. So we want ki district Panchayat ke bhi finances grow ho, intermediary Panchayat ke bhi grow ho, Gram Panchayat ke bhi grow. These are the two levels where you have to address the uh, issues with respect to finances. Okay. Now, if you see, <coughs> what are the role of the Gram Sabha? As we have discussed, we'll just quickly go through it. It will foster self-sufficiency and sustainable development at grassroots levels. Okay. And how we will leverage the local resources for revenue generation. So, this is one thing. Then, Planning because they are in direct touch. Also remember, Panchayati Raj institution are a tool of direct democracy. Especially your Gram Sabha. Okay. Now, <clears throat> planning, decision making, implementation of revenue generating initiatives that range from agriculture, tourism to small scale industries because they are the people who are in direct touch of the people and uh, less number of people to cater to so they can actually address the demand of the people okay because of the direct connection that they have so they have the authority to impose taxes, fees, levies, direction directing the funds towards local development projects, public services and social welfare program you can directly write this in your answers if you get a question on the role of gram sabhas so you can directly write this this will give you a very good marks now through transparent financial management inclusive participation gram sabha ensures accountability and foster community trust and then it empower villages to become economically independent and resilient so this is something that Gandhiji envisaged when he used to say that we want to have a self-sufficiency uh, in India. That this is what he wanted to say that if you empower your local bodies, they will empower the villages and then villages will empower the country. So it's like small, small units club together to make a big building. And that is what he envisaged when he talked about the self-sufficient village, villages of India. So, does Gram Sabha need to promote entrepreneurship and foster partnership with external stakeholders to enhance the effectiveness of the revenue generation efforts? Okay, so this was about the role of Gram Sabha. Now, <coughs> what are the avenues for own source of revenue? So, as per a report of uh, expert committee, which was constituted by the Ministry of Panchayati Raj, they highlighted that if you want to improve the revenues of the Panchayati Raj, there are certain areas where you can devolve power to them and through which they can earn their own revenue. So these were property tax, cess on land revenue, surcharge on additional stamp duty, tax on profession, advertisement, user charges for water, sanitation and lighting. That if you give these taxes to the PRIs, that their revenues will improve. Also, decision making regarding tax and non-tax basis. They should have power to determine their rates. Establishing provisions for periodic revisions, defining exemption areas, enacting effective tax management and enforcement laws for collection. Further, another non-tax revenues include fees, rent, income from investment sales, 
higher charges and receipts income from rural business hubs innovative commercial ventures so these were the avenues for own sources which were highlighted by this report see in case you get any question which says that panchayati raj institution are the bedrock of indian economy and still they are facing issues with respect to their financial devolution of power critically analyze now if you get that question there you can write the points that we have discussed so far and in the way forward if you quote this committee and write these points you will get very good marks because this is something which is a government document is saying see if you are adding information data anything from a quoting a government source that naturally improve the quality of your answer writing so and if you quote the government committee and you write these points you will fetch very good marks in your answers <coughs> now let's see about the microplastics and health concerns see recently a study was conducted by the scientists at columbia university in new york and they published it on 8, 4th of 8th of january in proceedings of national academy of science profiled individual particle uh, plastic particles to bridge the knowledge gap so this is something which was published now what was the highlight about it see as of now it was very difficult for uh, for us to determine for the scientists community to determine the particles which are available in the water or the plastic particles because of their size the size is generally nanoparticles or microparticles which are less than 1 micrometers okay so that is why it was very difficult for uh, people to figure it out however they have used a different technology and they find out that the number of plastic particles in a 1 liter water bottle is much more than the envisaged particle so when you are consuming 1 liter pani of uh, from that plastic bottle you are consuming millions of plastics in your body microplastic that will eventually impact your health so let's first figure out what is the technology that has been used here and that specifically they have used custom hyperspectral stimulated raman scattering so here we'll also understand what is raman scattering so this is the technology that they have used theek hai they could capture multiple images of an object molecules at different wavelength which allow them a comprehensive picture with which they could piece together the composition of the object okay using this at different wavelengths see what happen is what is raman effect is it says that see this is any object say for example this is your plastic bottle hai na they have so this is your say for example this is your water molecules okay now if you pass any light from these molecules some of will it will get absorbed by these molecules this molecule will absorb some of the light falling in it and this some will get scattered and on the basis of it they could figure out the nature of particle and it it also says that raman effect there are two two type of uh, scattering one is your inelastic scattering another is your elastic scattering so what is here is uh, happening here is in elastic scattering some of the light is getting absorbed by these molecules of any product now if these molecules are not absorbing any light and they are just scattering the light which is coming to them then that is referred to as elastic scattering <coughs> so this was with respect to raman effect now what are the findings see they figured out that 1 liter of plastic bottle contain more than 1 lakh particles 1 liter pani ke andar the water that we regular get the various type of uh, water bottles that we get from the market 1 liter water bottle has 1 lakh more than 1 lakh micro particles and nano particles 
and the bigger and the biggest worry is this that more than 90% of that 1 lakh is your nanoparticles okay and 10% is your microparticles so nanoparticles means the plastics which are uh, from 1 nanometer to 1 micrometer range and here the microplastics are also less than 2 micrometer of the uh, part size so see why this is a bigger concern so the this is a bigger concern because this small particles when they enter in your body jab ye micro ye nanoparticles jo pani ke through itne small size mein hai that they when they enter into the body they can easily get into your blood system and they can easily uh, reach to the blood vessels and then reach your heart and they are responsible for the kind of uh, heart issues uh, like uh, cardiac infarction and uh, uh, some sort of cardiac arrest and uh, hypertension they are responsible to cause damage to the blood vessels which is not healthy for your heart and that is why avoid as much as you can consuming plastics theek hai carry a glass water bottle or maybe a steel water bottle with you that is very safe to carry but avoid using plastic bottles these are not healthy as we have discussed one pla one plastic bottle contain lakh of plastic particles which can enter into your blood stream and eventually causing you heart issues okay <coughs> now <coughs> it also says that uh, uh, that along with these nano and micro particles it also had other particulate matters in it along with these plastics so uh, the earlier as we discussed the finding out of nanoparticles was difficult because of its size but using this hyper spectral uh, uh, scattering they were able to figure out the nanoparticles also now as we have discussed the impact myocarditis and thickening of the covering of heart pericarditis so inflammation of the heart cell within the heart cells is myocarditis covering of the heart pericarditis this can be the impact of your usage of microplastics so what were the type of plastics which were found when they analyzed these are the kind of microplastic that were found polyamide 66 polypropylene which is your low density high heat resistance and it is generally used in packaging so जितना भी आप पैकेजिंग बॉटल्स वगैरह देख रहे हो उन सब के अंदर यू विल फाइंड दिस पॉली प्रॉपरली ओके एंड प्लास्टिक लीचिंग हैपन्स वेन यू कीप एनी थिंग इन साइड दैम सो अवॉइड यूजिंग प्लास्टिक वाटर बॉटल्स और एनी थिंग इन प्लास्टिक अवॉइड यूजिंग प्लास्टिक एज मच एज यू कैन देन पॉलीथाइलिन पॉलीथाइलिन इज थिनर देन पॉली प्रॉपरलीन एंड द बेसिकली पॉलीथिन बैग्स डैट यू सी इज योर पॉलीथाइलिन इट इज ऑल्सो फाउंड then polymethyl methyl acrylate they are hard and junior plastic which are generally used in the processes okay so uh, these are also uh, used in uh, your non breakable crockery which are available use, such as melamine and all so avoid using them as as much as you can then polyvinyl chloride which is the world third most widely used synthetic polymer of plastic okay and it is used in electronic automobiles and other sectors in product ranging from piping siding blood banks tubing etc so we use it where it is required but these all sort of plastics are found in the water bottle and the water containing such <coughs> in contained in such bottle then polystyrene polystyrene is 100 to 200 nanometer in size and when they analyzed this was the compound which was found in maximum number in water okay so <coughs> polystyrene is something which is uh, used in thermocols if you know the plates which are made up of thermocols are actually made up of polystyrenes okay so these were the type of plastics which were found now let's move to the reservation of the maratha topic which is your last topic for the day see Maharashtra government there have in Maharashtra there there has been a long standing demand that they want the reservation of uh, Maratha for Marathas and many a times it has been attempted also previously also the 10% reservation was attempted for Marathas however uh, since 
the government the supreme court has kept a cap of 50% on reservation the uh, order was quashed by the supreme court here in an again an attempt before the elections government has passed the 10% reservation bill for maratha but now the people who were demanding the reservation are not happy because what they were demanding was that they should get reservation within the ambit of obc under a 50% cap only with the reservation that has been provided presently they have taken it to 62% now uh, as we have seen and earlier also since the petition uh, since the uh, the reservation was quashed by the supreme court because it breached the 50% limit this is also expected to be quashed in the same manner however we'll see the supreme court judgment but let's talk about article 16 article 16 and article 15 they are responsible for the reservation which is being provided to the various sections of the uh, uh, socially and educationally backward caste this was the norm so far however in the past 3 4 years since the government has also added by the amendment act that educationally uh, economically backward caste will also get reservation okay and as a result of which 10% reservation has been provided to economically backward class also so this has already breached the 50% target which was being set by the supreme court however the petition with respect to the uh, is uh, this economically backward class is still pending in the supreme court and we will see the report uh, the outcome of the judgment of the supreme court sooner or later on this aspect as well however here also again the thing is that it will uh, set up a norm if every if these are held constitutional this will again set up a norm that you can provide reservation beyond a cap of 50% so we'll be looking forward to it in the supreme court how when the matter will reach the supreme court will see and uh, this is uh, this is per se not important for your prelims but this article 16 is important for you and it is very important for your prelims as well as for your mains however you can write it as an example of constant breach of the constitution in your answers if you get a question on that so this was it for today and if you have any questions you may please write in the comment section and uh, you will find the detailed pdf of this content on the telegram channel so please follow the link till then have a good day thank you